I was not planning on being in the kitchen as much as I was on this day, but it is a weekend and sometimes even though I plan to have a break on the weekend, it just doesn't happen. So that is something that typically happens in the cooler months because I'm not outside in the garden or doing outside projects quite as much as often. So I'm inside, that's when a lot of the inside housework gets done, the cleaning, the organizing, in the kitchen a lot more. Once the colder months comes and the garden really starts kicking off, it, I will be outside a whole lot more and I'll feel like the inside is just falling apart because it's not getting my attention. But the few short months, the two to three months that we are cooler and everything's kind of at rest outside, except for the chickens and the cats, um, I will be inside in the kitchen and it is a time to just tend to the house and so the rest of the year the house can get pretty neglected on the inside. So I was going to make, I decided randomly to make some sourdough cinnamon rolls but I was going to do it more of like a braid style instead of your typical spiral cinnamon rolls. But I did not have any brown sugar and I actually don't buy brown sugar. I make my brown sugar. So to make brown sugar, all you need is uh, cane sugar and then you need molasses. And then you add the molasses to your cane sugar and mix it up. It is a lot faster and easier if you're using a stand mixer or a hand mixer, but you can also do it by hand just like I did it and it turns out just fine. So here is my dough that we're going to be using for the cinnamon roll. This is the sourdough. I am not going to go through the process of making this dough in this video but I will link that video that I have made on it at the end of this one. So at the end of this video, there will be like a picture to the video where I go through step by step how to make this sourdough bread. So I'm gonna roll this out and it this recipe for this dough makes two loaves. And so what I should have done was halved this dough and used half of it for something else because I did not realize how large this was going to get and this gets very large and overwhelming. I, after I made the cinnamon rolls, Bryant goes, should we be sharing this with other people? Cause this is a lot. And so I almost text my neighbors to see if anybody wanted some cinnamon rolls. And if you're watching this and you are my neighbor, I am sorry I did not, but we, and we did have quite a bit left over. Like this made a lot. But it was something that over the course of a few days, like just keeping in the fridge and warming it up when we wanted it, it was something we could snack on. It was a little treat for the kids. It was, it was nice to kind of have around. So I did not share it. We did keep it to ourselves and it was very delicious. So to do the braid, I am using the pizza cutter and I am cutting this in thirds. This is the filling. I will have a video link at the end of this video for how I make the filling for the cinnamon rolls. Um, that's another thing I can't go through with this video. I don't have time. But it is just brown sugar, I believe. I did. I did add succinate, butter, and cinnamon. And so I'm going to roll each piece up like little mini cinnamon rolls. And now cinnamon rolls, you start at one end and you roll all the way over to the other end. But the filling on these, since they're strips, really thin strips, it kept trying to fall out. So what I did was I ended up rolling both sides and I just rolled it in together and kind of like a cinnamon stick looks like the two ends of the cinnamon stick are rolled in together in the center. And so that's what I did. And they did try to start separating and spilling out. And so I go ahead when I, when I laid this other dough on top of the other one it kind of helped hold it together and so I started laying it before I had the other one fully rolled up and then my plan was to braid this like you would braid hair like you know you have three different sections when you braid hair and so my plan was to braid it like I was braiding hair maneuvering the dough though it didn't quite work out that way but it's okay like when you do this you don't have to do it perfect like just look at it, figure it out like I did. I just kind of looked at it a little bit like I don't know which one I want to lay over next and I just kind of choose one and do it. And it wasn't perfect, but it still looked good. So you don't have to be precise when you do this. Just have fun and experiment with what you might like to do. 
And so I'm just taking turns putting one dough over the other. And when I have a gap that looks like it's going to start spilling out, having trouble holding together, I just put a, a, another piece of dough and put it over it and it helped hold it together and everything worked out just fine. Now, this ended up being just super long, just really big. <laughs> and so I was going to put it in one pan, but w you'll see later that I'm very glad I did not do that because it just got too big and wasn't working out very good. So here I'm just, I'm still crisscrossing. And then when I get to the end, I'm going to crisscross them as tight as I can and then kind of pinch them together a little bit to where they hold together and then tuck them under. And so it is thicker on the ends, but it's okay. It has plenty of filling in there. And so when you cut into it, it's just, it's just, it's perfect. Like, I hope that y'all try this. I hope y'all make this. It's just, it was really, really good. So since it's so long, I can't fit it in any of my pans. So I cut it in half with my pizza cutter. And then I pinch the end so the filling doesn't fall out of where I had cut it. And then I put it in two different pans. I do have my pans lined with, lined with parchment paper so nothing sticks. And I'm going to be putting these in the refrigerator for the rest of this day and overnight. So this larger pan I have in a plastic bag. And then the other pan I have um, plastic wrap on top. And then it has a lid that goes on that pan. And so it's kind of double sealed. And I just stick those in the refrigerator. And then the next morning I take it out, set it on top of the stove while it's preheating. And uh, it, I mean, it rises just fine. It, it's, it, it works out really, really good. So I wanted something quick for dinner since I was in the kitchen a little more than I expected already. And I didn't feel like cooking dinner anymore. So I wanted something quick and I chose to do pizza. Now homemade pizza used to not be quick for me, but I've gotten so used to it and have done it so much that it is now something quick. So to do the pizza dough, well, I'll give you the recipe and it's for one dough. In the video, I am doing, uh, I'm doubling the recipe and doing two. So for one dough, it is one package of yeast or seven grams of yeast. Then it is two cups of flour or 240 grams, three fourths teaspoon salt, three fourths cup warm water, slightly warm, not too hot, one tablespoon of sweetener that you would like to use. I used honey and I did a little bit more than a tablespoon because we do like our dough a little sweeter. And then that is the base recipe. You can leave your dough just like that. I add some seasoning. So I did a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, and a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And then mix it all together, cover it when your dough is fully formed, and then let it double in size. For me, it was about an hour and a half because it's cooler in the kitchen with it being cold outside. But however long it takes for your dough to double in size, that's how long you need to wait. So I am going to do for one of the pizzas, I'm going to do a chicken fettuccine. So I am doing making the fettuccine sauce and I'm melting some butter. I added some garlic powder, onion powder, and then I added oregano and basil, but you can also add a, just an Italian seasoning mix and oh, and some salt. And then I added a little bit of whole milk. I didn't have cream. You typically add cream. I didn't have cream. So I just added a little bit of whole milk. And what you normally do for a homemade Alfredo sauce is now you would add some shredded mozzarella cheese and let it melt in there and thicken. I did not add the cheese to my sauce on top of the stove. I'm going to add my cheese on top of my dough first. So here I'm putting my stones or your pizza pan, whatever you're using, in the oven to preheat in the oven. And I'm preheating that to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. I do that because if I... If I put my pizza together on top of a cool pan and then I try to bake it, my crust was always really gummy in the middle and on the bottom and I could never figure it out. But if I go ahead and I'm making my pizza on top of a hot stone, it makes that bottom crust perfect. So um, I didn't get footage of me putting together my first pizza because my battery died. But this is going to be my other pizza. This is going to be the round pizza and your more traditional style pizza. So I'm going to roll this dough out. I did half the dough for the two pizzas. 
and I'm rolling this half of the dough out in circle to go on my circle stone. And then we're going to be using the tomato sauce on this one. So my other one, I um, put some shredded mozzarella cheese and then I did the Alfredo sauce and then I did chicken, some shredded chicken and then more mozzarella cheese. And so that's in the oven baking. It does bake for about 14 minutes. You want to bake between 12 and 15 minutes. And in my oven on this day, 14 minutes was good to go. So here I'm going to be taking out my round stone and you'll be able to see how I'm putting this together on top of the hot stone. Now this stone is 450 degrees. Be very careful you do not touch it with your fingers, okay? So I'm putting my dough on my hot stone. It is going to start rising pretty quickly. It's okay. You're going to get it in there just fine. Take your time getting your pizza together. You don't have to rush. So I am using pasta sauce. I do not use any special sauce for my pizzas. I don't buy marinara sauce special. I don't buy special pizza sauce. I use just plain pasta sauce. Spread it on there. I put some meat, put some shredded mozzarella, do whatever toppings you want to do. And uh, this is just, I did it really plain on for this one, And but do whatever you like to do and then you stick it in the oven at 450 degrees for 12 to 15 minutes. And when it comes out, it comes out just perfect. Now your crust is going to be uh, golden. It's not going to be super dark, but if you can see there, it's just a little golden, a little brown. That's when you know it's ready. That's what you're looking for when you're not quite sure how long to bake it. So here's where I put the cinnamon rolls on top of the stove while the oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And now, sorry, now that it's preheated, I'm putting them, thankfully they fit in there together. I wasn't sure if they were going to fit together, but they fit in there together. And I originally set my timer for 20 minutes. When I checked them at 20 minutes, they were definitely not ready. Now this was a very thick dough. Um, and it was having a hard time cooking in the center. So if you half the recipe, you could probably get away with uh, 20 to 25 minutes, but you do want it to be slightly golden on top. So just watch your time, set it for 20 minutes, but keep checking it once it gets to that 20 minutes and see if you need to go a little longer. And if you do just go at two, two minute intervals and then see, see how long it takes in your oven. So the boys actually weren't able to have cinnamon rolls on this morning because they got in trouble. So they're, um, unless they could make better choices, their punishment was they couldn't have cinnamon rolls. So they chose to have oatmeal. And so that's what I was putting together was their oatmeal. Here I'm doing the icing for the cinnamon rolls, which is just some powdered sugar, a dash of vanilla extract, and a dash of water, about a tablespoon of water really and then for the amount of sugar that I used and then whisk it together and it, uh, it makes your icing for the cinnamon rolls. So here, this is the brown sugar that we mixed up at the beginning of the video. I'm adding it to their oatmeal. I'm adding some salt and then I will eventually be adding just a little bit of maple syrup. I usually do maple syrup in their oatmeal, but I decided to make it a little sweetener, sweetener sweeter with the brown sugar too because I was feeling bad that they couldn't have cinnamon rolls that they were in trouble and so I was trying to make it a little extra special. Um, I do add eggs to my oatmeal especially since this is all that they are wanting. I want to make sure they're getting good protein with it being their breakfast and so for this amount of oatmeal I did two eggs but sometimes I will do three or four if I have a larger amount of oatmeal. This is where I'm adding a little bit of the maple syrup. It's not much, but when I tasted it, it was missing that maple flavor that we like. And so I knew they were probably going to mention that. And so I added just a little bit to get that flavor in there. So Anna decided that she wanted some oatmeal too with her cinnamon roll. So I'm going ahead. I'm going to get them this oatmeal in the bowl so it can start cooling off for them. And that way I have no complaints when I have them come sit down and there's nothing that's too hot. So after about 35 minutes for me, the cinnamon rolls are finally done. You see how large they are, <laughs> how much they have grown. And I'm very glad I did two separate pans. And so uh, you probably, most people want to let this cool, but I put the icing on it nice and hot. I love how it, how it melts and mixes in any, everything. 
and it was absolutely delicious.